All right, guys, I'm going to show you what I've learned about the spy drill on the water camera. This camera was meant for trolling and bottom jigging. It really wasn't intended for short casting. I've adapted it in the beginning so I can use it. And I've refined it now so the camera should sit up right the majority of the time when cast it up. I'll show you how I do mine. All right, guys, Scuba Chris here. You, you see, I do a lot of work with my spy drill underwater camera. It's really opened my eyes out to what's really out there, how fish react to my baits, and sometimes how they don't react to it. But this camera was originally made for jigging, you know, bottom jigging from a boat to being uh, trolled behind a boat. Now, it really wasn't made for short casting, but I made some changes, as you've seen in my previous videos, and I had to make those changes to make it work. Over the months, I've modified it to a system where I'm going to employ today that should take care of, of all my angling because when, when it hits the water, this unit weighs a little over three ounces, all right? When it hits the water and it's floating down slowly, it only weighs roughly a quarter of an ounce floating down. So when it hits the bottom, it could be a little like this, a little on the side. We want it to land straight so we can shoot correctly. I'm going to show you what I'm about to do. I've been experimenting with these. These weights here, the torpedo lids. It, this is what I use a lot when I go whipping from shore. This is a 3 8. So I encase it in Scott electrical tape because um, this bar here is very sensitive because it's part of the internal system of the camera. So you don't want to disrupt it by uh, um, putting anything uh, metallic that might disrupt the signals, so I coat it with the tape. Now this is the 3 8 and I've been experimenting with that, and the, the, it floats down gentle, and what happens in the silty sand, it works good because it doesn't, the weight doesn't dig in the sand when you move, when you, you're trying to get your line straight and you're moving the camera forward. Now, when you, when you put a heavier weight, such as this one, it will dig in. So I, I always change it. I use this for areas that are, when, when I go to, it's going to be sandy. If I'm going to reefy areas, I prefer this. Okay, this is the lens where it's shooting. You don't want your weight in the front because what's it going to do is it's going to make it tilt forward and you're only going to take pictures of the ground. You want it in the back. So it's going to tilt. See, right there is normal. That's even. If you want it in the back here, so it's going to tilt up just a little. So now you can catch the fish when it's just before it's hitting your bait or it's circling your bait. So this is the rail system here. Has plenty room to work with. So let me show you what I'm going to do. You notice it's like the side of a submarine here. It's almost like a submarine. You notice you got chimes. See the chimes right here? See that? See how it's not completely round, but it comes in here. What you want to do is, this is a uh, three-quarter ounce torpedo, and I encased it with the tape. If you put it right into the chime, it fits perfect. So if you get two pieces, put it in the chime, that'll work. Now, what I was doing before, I was putting it right up to that, like there. And the problem with doing that is because the weights are so close, sometimes because it's, it's, the weights were centered, it'll, it rarely came out even. It would tilt one way or the other. So I noticed the further I put it apart here, along the chimes, meant that I was getting some good shooting angles that everything was even. See, when it hits, this is the bottom here. When it hits, it's going to maintain that posture. That's what you want. So to do that, the, these little brass rings here were round. So I, I took my needle nose, I flattened them out so I can put my um, tie strap to it. So what I'm gonna do, get my tie strap. Let's see, I gotta look at the end. This end faces up. See, if I don't flatten it, I can't, put this through, it'd be really hard. Um, put this one through the end, like so, see? 
Uh, let me see. The other way, I'm sorry. This flat in here, see that flat in, should be touching the unit. So put this through the last one. I, recently I've been shooting doing it this way. See what's gonna happen. See, that's what we're gonna want. We want it to come alongside the unit. So that looks good. Get the other one. Let me see now. We want it like that, so. Put it through the hole. Put it to here. Now, I mean, the lighter one will work, but because we're doing this in shallow water, the swell action will move it around. Um, it, 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 you know, the, the ground underwater is not even, which means that the camera's gonna rock a bit. So you do want a little bit heavier lead. I found that the, the three quarter, which this is, works really good as compared to the three eighths, all right? I only use the three eighths when I go into sand. I mean, really fine, silty sand, because no matter how the unit's gonna land, it's just gonna sit there. Now, see how it's gonna sit right in the chimes there? Now, I'm gonna put the other one on and I'm gonna show you what it looks like. Woohoo! That came out nice. Look at that. See? The unit's gonna land this way. The weight's in the back, which means it's gonna force. The, it's going to force the lens to look up a little bit more instead of looking down. But see these chimes here? Look at that. See those chimes? The leads are sitting exactly in the chime area, right? And I have, instead of all the weights being set in the middle, now they're out on the sides about an inch apart from each other. So when it lands, it's just going to land like this. Even weight on each side. It's just going to land like that. So it's going to be even landing instead of like this and it's going to be pointing if you're the fish instead of it pointing down into um the sand or the reef now it's gonna be looking right at you that's what i want so this looks very very good i mean i like this one so we're gonna snip off the tie straps look at that isn't that streamlined that is how you do it and of these are the type of snap swivels. Use um, do not. I don't use the ones rated more than forty pounds. This is rated, I think, for forty-three or forty-seven pounds. It's good enough because my main line is fifty that, that attaches uh, directly to the back. All right, and I'm using the same type of swivel for the back that's attached to my rod. Now, you don't want, I, I lowered the, 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 uh, um, the wire strength in the front. The reason being is if I get a good hit, like say a shark or a ray, uh, this would, uh, a really strong hit eventually would bend out the wire because it's a softer wire as compared to one in the back. The one in the back is almost twice that, it's 87 pound test. This is roughly 43 pound test, all right? And the reason why you want that is because you don't want to lose this, all right? So we're trying to get it so if it, you get a really big hit that this will break before the back because you don't want to lose this. So that is your finished product. That's what I've been using recently. Um, a lot of people have written me, asked me, what am I doing? This is what I'm doing.